Welcome to Rotary and Serving Our Community. Today we have with us um, members of the Rotary Club of Montecito. We have uh, Harlan Green and John Glanville. Harlan, tell us a little bit about yourself. What got you in Rotary? What well, got me to Rotary? Well, actually, originally it was probably the Peace Corps because I served two years in Turkey in the 60s and uh, wanting to be, stay involved in the community when we came to Santa Barbara. And, and actually one time, Goleta, before Santa Barbara, I wanted to be able to do the same kind of community development work that I did in Turkey. It was in a large village. And surprisingly enough, there are projects very, very similar here on the community level and, uh, and even the current project we're working on in the Congo. <laughs> very so good. that's one reason. Community development, community service is why I joined Rotary and been in Rotary for almost 20 years, I think. Right. Good for you. Yeah. John, how about you? Uh, Thanks, Wade. Um, I joined Rotary down in Pasadena, California, and it was a business colleague who thought it was a good networking opportunity for me to, you know, get to know other like-minded business people. And over the last 20 years, I've gotten to know a lot more about Rotary, Rotary's, you know, uh, mission, and uh, agree with Harlan. It's great not only on the local community level engagement, but also on the international uh, level. It's uh, it, it's a great organization to be a part of. Great. And, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it is a lot of fun. There's no doubt about that. And fellowship. Fellowship is it's true. It's yeah. on our list We also, do see right? that. Yeah. So tell us what's special about the uh, Rotary Club of Montecito, because we've had a few other clubs here. I want to know what you guys are proud of as far as the Montecito Rotary. Well, I think uh, we can start with community, local community projects. And the reason, one reason John is here is because he's president of our foundation. We have quite a, I guess, a fairly well endowed foundation, do we not now, John? We, we do, Harlan. And uh, Wade, it's uh, it's been a privilege and an honor to represent our foundation in uh, presenting um, grants to a number of different uh, nonprofit organizations throughout the community over the last. I've been involved with our club for eight years. Been involved with our foundation for about that period of time. Uh, we do a, a spring grant and a fall grant um, award uh, program, typically five to ten uh, local nonprofit organizations, organizations you would know, um, the Food Bank, um, Channel Keepers, um, Santa Barbara, um, the Maritime Museum. The Maritime Museum, yeah. And uh, lots of, I mean, the typical grants go to. Um, Nonprofits that have some kind of rotary connect. There's usually a Rotarian connected with that organization. Okay, so it's part of the club so then. So it's you, part of the club. You get engaged and, through the club members that way. Right, and uh, and typical grant size. You know, I think mentioned five to five hundred to a thousand dollars, and uh, we like to keep it simple. You know, so this isn't like you have to fill out you know lots and lots of paperwork. It's a three-page form, and uh, actually it's two-page form sign off and you know we're we're pretty easy as far as you know if you're looking for a good opportunity to pick up a couple hundred bucks uh, not a bad organization to hit up sounds good so and we uh, mustn't forget our scholarship program um true it's and I, 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 I well i've heard about that that's <laughs> our big, that's our <laughs> thank, big thank, thank you for the, the the lead in on that uh harlan um uh, so, some wise members of our club uh, 15 years ago felt that it was a good thing for, to support Santa Barbara City College. So they started, um, and this is um, Kurt and uh, Bill and several other uh, old timers in our club, old timers <laughs> younger than me, but, uh, and they would essentially you know, fund one or two or three scholarships. And so a scholarship at Santa Barbara City College back then was about $1,000, where you know, now a scholarship is around $3,500. Wow. Um, so even though that's probably the bargain of the year for getting a, a, a community college degree, it's still, you know, sure. um, it's quite a, a, so, and there's a lot of very, um, a lot of students who deserve our support. So we, we generally we've gotten it to 10 or 11 scholarships. Several of these have been funded fully as endowed scholarships. Uh -huh. 
And so we're working towards growing that number uh, as we go forward. So are all 10 of those or 11 of those the $3,500 scholarships, or is it a breakdown of a little? It, it's, a, it's a breakdown. It's a breakdown. Um, okay. the, uh, we typically are <coughs> somewhere between 1000 and $3,500. Understood. Now, what is the um, prerequisite, I would say, for the student? Is it for scholastic use? Is it for the uh, technical it, it's, trades? It's, it's generally, uh, we focused on vocational. Okay. Um, so this is, uh, and typically it's just funding going direct to the student. So okay, this is, it does go through the scholarship foundation, uh, the Santa Barbara oh, City they, College Foundation. Oh, City College Foundation. And okay. it is um, granted by them to the student. But student, it's, it's, a, it's a no strings attached. Um, nice. You know, we are hoping they use the money well, but a lot of community, um, you know, students, community college students, they're not, you know, hey, I need money to pay for gas to get to school. Right. I need money to pay rent. I need money to feed myself. Um, and while books and lab fees and tuition are an important part of the equation, sure. they, they oftentimes have more pressing needs than, uh, well, it all sort of balances out. Right, um, right. So, and I also think it's important that students are given a responsibility. Um, we go through a process with the deans at Santa Barbara City College, selecting uh, students in the various vocational, um, so you know, the nurse, yeah, ocean yeah. Ocean, commodities. Uh, they have a diving program, okay. they have the, There's the, the automotive, automotive yeah. program, they have the nursing, several nursing programs. Right, they've got a media arts program. Um, so you don't specialize in a specific vocation. It could be any of the anything that falls in the vocational. Um, and they nominate their, what they consider their most deserving student in each of these. Who, now, who does that? The uh, well, it ends up being probably the head of each department. Yeah. Okay. The, so the dean is um, positioned to actually figure out, okay, who are we going to award these ten scholarships to? They typically go to the heads of the different departments to, who you know, pick who's their your number one student they want okay. to uh, to receive a scholarship. Yeah. A lot no. of them, we have single moms, you know, we're getting through nursing yeah. school, really need that money. True, very true. Yeah. 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 Now, vocation is one of the uh, avenues of service of Rotary. Was that one of the reasons you went in that direction, or, was, or is it just something that the, the vision of the foundation saw the need uh, for? This was something the club felt was important to support. Okay. Um, I think, it, again, this was started back in um, the early part of the last decade, um, and the thinking was that there's support for scholarships to students at UCSB or Westmont and some of the four-year exactly. colleges, yeah. but there wasn't support for students attending uh, community college getting a vocational degree. Yeah. And you know, yeah. the, the the bigger picture wave was who's going to actually do um, things like who's going to run the TV studio. <laughs> um, you know, these are yeah. the kinds of skills that you're you know that we as a society need. Um, and so they, the club felt that it was important to do it focused on vocational as opposed to focused on maybe an academic scholarship. Understood. Yeah. Now, anticipating you don't have an endowment created with this massive uh, foundation, how do you fundraise for the foundation? What projects do you do or events do you guys well, we, do? Do you want, do you want, I'll, sure. Uh, since we're on the I'll foundation, I'll, I'll chip I'll, in. I'll, 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 <laughs> don't you worry. Don't worry about Harley. He's going to jump in. But he's the president. Yeah. Right. I'll, I'll field this one. Yeah. So we have typically, um, as you know, Wade, clubs uh, charge uh, quarterly dues. A part of our dues selection or part of our menu of options is to make a contribution not only to our local club foundation, but also to Rotary International. And so we have a number of, of, you know, we're a small club, 40 members. I'd say a good 25 to 30 of them make a quarterly contribution, and it's typically 25 to $50 each. Okay. And, but that builds up over, over time and, and gives us um, the latitude to make these um, We've had some requests grants. too, haven't we? Right. Yeah, we've uh, typically, and what has happened that we've been very yeah. fortunate is um, we've had people like you know, Chris Carroll uh, bequeathed his, you know, part of his estate hmm. came. And so we've ended up with a, you know, six-figure uh, endowment that we work from. So um, we're, you know, the, the foundation board has determined we want to gift 6% of 
assets under management. We're typically looking at, um, you know, it's about $12,000 a year that okay. we hand out to. Very good. And, um, and it's all tax deductible contributions, 503C, C3. Yeah, 501C3. 501C3. Very right. good. Okay, Harlan, I know you're chomping at the bit here. Let's, let's <laughs> talk a little bit about some of these international projects. Yeah, yeah, well, and that's a beautiful segue because of our international project, the one we have this year, what happened is this. Uh, back in, uh, I was president in 2010-11, and Dr. Victoria Bentley came and joined our club. She has two daughters living in town. She comes from Marin County. And she was started working in the Congo, Eastern Congo. And it was right basically uh, after the Civil Wars there. And a lot of women had been raped and uh, traumatized. And she is a trauma psychologist. Mm -hmm. That's her, that's what her, she's a therapist and a clinical psychologist. And she has start, she started up some work wanting to help these women in the Eastern Congo. It's right near the Rwanda border. Okay, so that was in an area that obviously with a, where they had the, the Rwandan the Tutsi Hutsi civil war that was that's what started the whole thing when the when the Tutsis <laughs> kicked the Hutsis out after the genocide they had it all started back then so anyway these mil these uh, militias took over a lot of the forest and and as you know they were raping and pillaging so the women were the main victims as I don't want to tell the gory details so she went over there and uh, and uh, and realized the need and then came to us Montecito Rotary Club at the time, although she works with all the clubs up basically up and down California, I think, because she has many more projects. But setting up first a trauma center to treat these women as a therapist, you know, as they had a, uh, a, a clinic, you know, a health clinic to help them repair themselves, is, is the horrible things that happen to women that are raped this way. And uh, then an orphanage for the children, the offspring. And we began chipping into this ourselves around 2010. And we, in those days, there were different kind of grants, right? It wasn't a global grant. Uh, I don't know what you call it. Matching grant. Matching grant. Matching Thank grant. you. That's it. So we chipped in, oh, 60,000 here, 60,000 mm -hmm. there, probably over 200,000 to date. And uh, other various projects, in, including a vocational school. Now the women sell their, their crafts, their arts and crafts. Uh, so we have tended to concentrate in that area mainly because of her. We also have worked in the Philippines and other areas, and we've chipped in, of course, at other clubs doing other work. But our, our area seems to be in eastern Congo, and one reason is we have this wonderful Rotary Club over there, the Mwanganza uh, uh, Buk Bukavu Rotary Club, <laughs> okay. okay, is what it's called, of eastern Congo. And uh, Mwani Matabaro is the president this year, and he is quite the quite the fundraiser, I'll tell you. He'd come over here and I'm sure he visited your club. And he, he's a wonderful <laughs> guy and we have a lot of pictures. And at the top we have the Ushindi Center, which we help fund, a 100 primary, secondary age children school for three years. And then we have income generating projects for women survivors, the part of the Ushindi Center. That's the vocational school. Those are all graduates. They've graduated as many as 100 at a time. And that means we brought them uh, uh, sewing machines in there that they could use. They can, they can get the materials pretty easy there in the Eastern Congo. I'm guessing, I'm guessing that's the wares then that they're selling? They're displaying the wares. They do okay. bags. They do Beautiful. aprons. They do... Beautiful job. Oh, you name it what they've done. But they're co you notice the colors they have Yeah, there. yeah. Vibrant colors. They're wonderful colors. And then this is Dr. Bentley here uh, in Goma. Goma was where a lot of the fighting went on. It was a little further north, and they were badly, badly damaged. And uh, so she also worked up in Goma. And I don't know, this is her project here, the mm -hmm. IDP. But you see below that, the trained women victims of sexual, the certified trauma healers. She trained them to go out into the community mm -hmm. to help other women, counsel them and get them into any kind of help, medical help they needed. Because more kept coming in. The, the wars are over now, so yeah. things yeah. have calmed down. But for a couple years after, since I became president, 2010, we were funding grants over there until at least this last year. John, mm -hmm. as I remember it, right? right. Okay, there's there's a building that we could not pay for because it, but there's another grant we furnished it with our grant money. Uh, it's beautifully beautifully done, as you can see. And then we have the teen mothers staffed house. This is part of the the orphanage you see here. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, the, this is again, as she says here, training programs ensure that young mothers who stay one year are able to be self-supporting when they leave. So giving them a vocation, okay. And we have to have, as part of the grant conditions, health education and literacy classes because, as you know, Rotary, Rotary grants are meant to be uh, 
a, a fund continuing projects, projects that don't just die out in a year, that they keep Become going. Become sustainable. And right. you do that by, by, by educating, bringing, uh, educating the teachers who will then teach. And it's the same story as I had in the Peace Corps. You know, you, you teach people how to fish. You don't, you don't just provide the fish <laughs> mm -hmm. so they can continue on after you. And we, some of the other projects we had are the farming projects. It's actually a, a king of eastern Congo who donated a valley for these women. They wow. could grow their vegetables. I don't know who this king is, but it's the <laughs> Democratic Republic of Congo. <laughs> but uh, uh, they, pr they provided the land that they could uh, uh, grow v their vegetables and farm. And is that for commercial growth or is it for this the is families? For, well, this is just for the villages. For See, the they're, villages. Everything's communal over there. You, you share okay. everything with everybody. Mm -hmm. But no, they do have a peace market. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. What happened was they had a market on the border with Rwanda uh, in eastern Congo that uh, they traded across supplies. You know, it was a market. And it was a market for, uh, like, we have our farmer's market, right? Okay. Well, over there, everything's outdoors and open air. And uh, it was destroyed during the Civil War that is, you know, just dissolved. So we sent over a, a Mark Magid, who's a general contractor in our club, and with 17,000 that we, Dr. Bentley, and all of us uh, collected because we couldn't get it through a grant. We got through our own, he built a new peace market for them. Wow. It holds, I don't know, 40 or 50 stalls mm -hmm. in there. And uh, it was just wonderful. Uh, uh, the grand opening they had over there, and it, our general contractor was the one who helped design it and made sure it was built, you know, to, to standard structural uh, safety standards and all that. So it was a beautiful peace market. Uh, God, we've done so much other things. We, there was a school we helped fund over there that Amani Mataboro put together. I think maybe it was in Goma. Uh, a latrine. We needed latrines for the peace market, right? Uh, and the solar lights. We've had a. There's no electricity in those villages, so. We provided 200 solar lights uh, that are powered by the sun. They charge up so at night they can study at night. Uh, Wade, you've heard the program at sure. uh, UCSB, the uh, Unite to Lights. Unite to Lights. Yeah, that's true. Program. One of our shows. Oh, okay. And <laughs> then comes to our current project, and this is in the same Momosho district. What happened was, and I provided these photos to show you, was that. Uh, the Civil War also destroyed the water supply for, mm -hmm. the, for a large part of this area. And it did that because the, the reservoir was blown up and the water pressure uh, burst all the pipes that provided the villages with, with their drinking water and uh, or their fountains, whatever they had. It, they all, you know, these villages all work off of either one or two fountains in the village. Everybody gets their water from that. And uh, so I provided pictures to show you where they are now, and that is these women and children have to go one and a half to two miles up the mountain to the mm. reservoir and, and can carry the water back on their backs in these, in these plastic uh, uh, containers. Uh, and so there's six villages involved, and they, they've had this budget they put together of $63,000. And we happen this year to be eligible for exactly $63,000, <laughs> our, our uh, Montecito Rotary Club. And because of that, hey, there's a fit right here. They've had this bu thing budgeted for almost a year on how to repair the whole system. And uh, so we are right now, what we have to do is bring in 18000 and then that gets matched with the rest of the money from District and, and Rotary International. Uh, it gets, it's a wonderful, wonderful one uh, project to do because this is a year of water. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can talk about that too, Wade, where, <laughs> where we are with why they've chosen this year for water. California certainly needs the water. <laughs> <laughs> We're I'm practicing the out there to bring it back here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's all I can the think Congo, of. <laughs> the Congo has plenty of water, of course, but yeah. they don't have the means to get it to the individual, individual villages right, right. in a clean and sanitary fashion. Yeah. Uh, does that kind of spell it out to you a little pretty, bit? Pretty much. Uh, if you want to go through the picture set, so you, you yeah, gave me some yeah, pretty yeah. fascinating photos here. Yeah. So. The f well, the one picture, oh, here we go. Here's the peace market. He's okay, Marsh so de Momosho. Okay. Remember, they speak French over there because ah, okay. it was Belgian. It was a Belgian province. Okay. So, and, uh, and, but fortunately, they use dollars to fund their projects because it's about <laughs> a million and a half uh, <laughs> Congolese francs to a dollar. <laughs> well, and so okay. we, can, we can send them the money over there, and they don't have, they have bank accounts set up and mm -hmm. everything, so they can go spend the money as dollars and not have to go into their... Mm -hmm. their I do, uh, one project, though, we had to do it with euros for some reason. I don't know why. Had to go through a European bank to get over mm -hmm. there, funded in Europe. Anyway, whatever, whatever the exchange rate is, we've been able to do this. And there's all the content. The Marsh de Momosho, mm -hmm. this was 2011, July. You can see there when it opened. And um, 
These are, this is the organizations you see, all the various clubs, Rotary Club, Montecito, Wakefield, Falling Whistles, and Empower Congo Women is actually the name of, of Dr. Bentley's website. And you can, anybody can look it up, empowercongowomen.org, empower to see if they want to uh, do anything more for her for the Congo. But right now, we are looking to get our $9,000 matching grant together. We, we're, we have to provide 18. We will match 9,000 of that. Uh, and we have to raise other 9,000 others from, as you have deemed necessary, mm -hmm. within our district so that it can be matched by the district grant, right? Right. And so we're up to $7,500, and we're hoping for another 1500 And we're still some clubs pending that we want to hear from Good. and other organizations. And once we get to 9000 mm -hmm. we'll be able to match that ourselves out of our own club. Good. Very good. So the picture here, you have a picture of a structure. Yeah, I have yeah. No this idea is, what this that is an old is fountain. That? It was basically ah, okay. uh, no longer in use because the water has the pipes are broken that provided water to it. Got so it. it's going to be rebuilt once we get the water supply back to it. We so actually have two civil engineers that they've brought into the club especially to, to, <laughs> to reassure us that it's going to be done correctly. Uh, there's, you can see uh, one existing because this is a large valley. 30,000 people live in this district. These are just six of the uh, uh, six of the uh, villages in this whole district. Another part of it was done already. Uh, so here's the, here's a working one. Okay. And uh, then you see there's a, there's a picture in the mountain where the actual reservoir is behind this ridge up here. Okay. You have to climb up there now to get the water. So here's two existing fountains, okay? Okay. And then you'll see on this last picture of where they get their water from now, a big mud hole with a pipe got it. Uh, running out. So that's just, that's, they have to climb up the mountain to this spot. So that's how they do it now, and, and of course what it does is takes women away from their regular chores. They have to spend this time, you know, this is silly. I mean, we should be able to get this fixed, and, and the kids can't go to school. They've got to, you know, carry the water back and forth. So there's a lot of reasons, and we've, we have the grant, and uh, we are, you know, basically we have it uh, pre-approved. Everybody's looked at it and says it looks good. So all we have to do is reach our funding goal to get the final approval. How many uh, members of your club are planning on going to the project actually to well, we look at it, evaluate well, it? I, well, for sure, uh, uh, Mark is our, our general it. contractor. Mm -hmm. He'll go back. You know, he's had experience there, Imani. I don't know who else will go. I mean, it, if I have the time, I might make it. It's going to be at least a year before this is done. And I've had experience with this in the Peace Corps, uh, doing the similar projects like this in, in my villages. But uh, so, I mean, I have a little bit of a background, but he would be the preferred person to go. And it depends what grant, travel grants we get, right? The, that is true. The, the, the travel grants are limited. There's not a lot of money. Not a lot of money travel. there, but uh, yeah, I know, I think true. we can get one at least. Yeah, uh, yeah. And so at least we get Mark over there and he would be the one. He would be the one. He's worked over there. He knows all the people and he's a, he's a contractor. That's his business. Very good. Coming back then, since we had, it sounds like you guys are very active internationally. Um, the club, I noticed uh, or I've seen that you guys have done like golf, golf tournaments, golf events. Oh yeah, like you that. were asking about fundraising. How, yeah, how, 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 how do we, how, how do we yeah. raise money? Well, um, what's, yes, we have had a very successful run of golf tournaments. Now that the club is under renovation, uh, but <laughs> which we're, is Montecito, we're, we're, right? We're, by yeah, the way, so <laughs> we're sort of a, a vagabond uh, club. <laughs> we will go to any golf course and to have our have our events. By the way, where are you guys meeting at now that you know, <coughs> after, after Montecito closes down? Uh, we're you know it's just, we haven't crossed that bridge. Okay, we're, we're in well, discussions yeah, three, with several down options. to three finalists. Okay, how's yeah. that? Sounds good. <laughs> so uh, we have till January. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But uh, but what we're actually coming up this uh, January, and we can get you the details. We can get you an invitation if <laughs> you and Roxanne can <laughs> join good. us for uh, our lobster boil. Uh, we're actually doing a, a full-on dinner there we go. Uh, okay. party and uh, with band dancing. Oh. I don't happen to have that day off the top. I, by the way, I, did, I think I did see that. It's on the um, district website, Dif right? District. You guys it is. Good, good. Up good. There. Yeah, that's going to be our major yeah. fundraiser for the Ramosho Water Project oh, right. Right. of our own monies. You nice, know. Nice. And it's going to be at the Harbor Restaurant. At the Harbor Restaurant. That's right. right. I'll provide it. And not only that, but we're also honoring Larry um, Hammond. Yeah, Hammett, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So Larry was a long-term member of our club, uh, passed away this last year. Mm -hmm. and uh, Major donor we, and everything. Uh, and we decided it was worthwhile to honor him uh, and his family for uh, 
all the support they've given Rotary so, over the decades. I just, I just remembered a story I heard about you guys, and that was that you guys originally were not the Rotary Club of Montecito. You know, there, there's a long-standing discussion about whether <laughs> we were Carpinteria or, uh, or not, and who actually, what, you know, who ended up staying in Montecito and who ended up going down to Carpinteria? <laughs> Maybe you so, know, Wade. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving the country. I, 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 I've heard this discussion <laughs> I, before. Actually, I know the story about it. <laughs> I think we met at the Miramar for a while, too, didn't we? Way back well, that was the true. sort of the, that was the middle, way, you know, ah. halfway to Montecito, halfway yeah. to Carpinteria. The, the, so. his, the history of it actually shows, uh, and this is from Rotary International. They okay. checked archives and they said, you guys actually were the Rotary Club of Carpinteria. The original Rotary uh, because Club? they said Montecito couldn't support a Rotary Club because they weren't large enough. No. no. <laughs> That's what yeah. I've heard. That's what they told me. Yep, my God. <laughs> and so when they found out that it could, your club moved we to Montecito and changed the name to where it wanted to be. Right. Ah. Uh. <laughs> well, it said there was not other carpentry clubs then? At that time, no. You guys were, yeah, well before that. Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. yeah, our club is over 60 years old. Yeah. yeah. So, um, we're Outstanding. You say 40 and members? We're doing, yeah, we're back up to 40. Yep. Right? 40, 40 42, actually. 40. And we're, we're seeing quite a, I mean, um, we've got people like Emily uh, Solomon, who's joined our club. Emily's under 30 years old. She's a firecracker. She's got a thousand one things going on. She's in the social media uh, space, um, and that's her business. And it, I think all people under 30 years old are in the social media arena. But it's it's kind of thing where we, <laughs> she got up. This, well, we're kind of running out of time here, so I'm sorry, well, John. I, I'm going to cut you off, but thank you very much for uh, sharing what your club's doing. Some outstanding yeah, things. Pleasure. Um, I noticed you're getting a lot younger. There's a lot of uh, new members out there, pretty active and engaged at your that's club. Right, that's right. So uh, if ever you have a chance, stop by. It's the Rotary Club of Montecito. They do some outstanding and great things. You'd be very uh, pleasantly surprised, very hospitable group. So take a look on their website and join them in. With that, thank you. We will see you at the next program.